Hello, ladies and gentlemen of YouTube. I am Clementine, and as always, I am Super Saiyan. But never mind that. In this video, we're gonna take some old guitar parts and various pieces of discarded e-waste from the junk closet. We're gonna do some cutting and grinding and drilling, maybe even a little bit of wax potting. The goal of today's experiment is to try to make the strongest humbucker in the world. I will show and explain the entire process in detail. Then we'll chuck it into the testing mule guitar and see how that works. If this sounds like something you might be interested in, stay tuned. Roll that butthole full of bean fluid. Okay, if you guys are familiar with my pickup experiment videos, you know that this is when we start cutting wood, making bobbins, banging in slugs, and winding coils. But not today! This is a loaded pick guard from a Washburn Strat copy. And we're gonna start by removing this neck pickup and the middle pickup. Now if I'm trying to build a super hot humbucker, wouldn't I want that overwound bridge pickup? Well no, and I'll explain why later. Now let's take the wire cutters and just clip these bad boys right out of here. Now that they've been freed from the confines of that cheap plastic prison, we need to remove this ceramic magnet. Usually I just take a pair of pliers and grab a hold of this magnet and wrench it all around and it shatters to hell. Some people will stick a soldering iron to them and heat them up so the glue melts and then they just pull it off. But I'll show you a much more proper and safer way to do it that doesn't destroy the magnet. A good way to do this is to take a small, sharp, flathead screwdriver and score the glue line. Then you wanna work that screwdriver around the magnet till you find a place where it'll go under the magnet. Now don't pry it, just turn the screwdriver. You'll feel the magnet starting to loosen up and then it will pop right off. Now you have this nifty little ceramic magnet bar that you can use for other pickup experiments or it makes a kick-ass refrigerator magnet. Now let's get these covers off. You can do this much the same, working the screwdriver under there and turning it to get it to break loose and then you can pull it off, but you might be tempted to do it in this gap right here. Don't do that. You will damage the coil and kill the pickup. Now that we've got that off, we can look at this coil. It appears that this one may have been wax potted, but the other one had not. And either way, it obviously wasn't done very well. With the amount of power we're going to be getting out of this humbucker, it is going to feed back, but we will need to wax pot these coils to keep that to a minimum. Okay, this is the bottom half of a chassis from a computer power supply. This is made of steel, and we're going to use this to make the back plate. While I measure and mark this, we're going to talk a little bit about that. I can see the comments from the pissed off internet experts already. Humbuckers don't use ferrous material for a back plate. It's made out of copper or brass. This dude don't know shit. Well, I do have copper plate, and it's a lot easier to cut. And I have used dual copper plates wired in series with the pickup coil in the past to great effect for the sound I was going for. What you have to bear in mind is that back in the day when Seth Lover invented the humbucker, jazz and swing music were very popular. He was going for a dull, smooth sound and he used those non-ferrous back plates to offset the higher output. That was simply an accidental byproduct of using two coils wired in a configuration that would kill hum. I'm not going for a dull, muddy sound. I want a bright, sparkly, kick-ass sound like a Telecaster bridge pickup, but just much hotter. Because, as I've stated before, if it's twangy, it's rockin'. <laughs> A Telecaster bridge pickup does in fact have a magnetic ferrous plate. It appears to be copper, but that's simply a coating to promote soldering and resist corrosion. Now, normal humbucker back plates will have these little wings sticking out of them with a one mounting hole on one side and two mounting holes on the other side, and that's a good idea. You can tilt the pickup, but I'm going to do something a little different. We'll talk about that just a little bit. We may even use a diagram. So now let's cut this thing out. This is a side grinder with an abrasive cutoff wheel that is actually made for a skill saw. They're a lot bigger so they last a lot longer and in general you get a lot more blade for your money. I'm definitely not trying to be real precise here. I'm just roughing this thing 
out because we'll have to clean up these sharp edges with the flapper disc on the side grinder anyway as well as rounding off the corners this part would be inside the guitar where no one would see it if this was really being used but it's just an experiment and speaking of that this is that little bit of a different thing i said i would talk about i'm putting these ends in the vise and bending it over and then using the pliers to beat them into a sharp edge to make kind of a U shape that's just a little bit taller on one end, which will be the bass strings or wound strings. Let's go to a diagram to explain the idea behind this. Okay, let's talk about how a humbucker is made. There's a non-ferrous plate, let's say it's brass. On top of that, you got a magnet. Then on top of the magnet, coils. This is a view from the bottom, like the bridge. Let's look from the side. Now you have these spiral eddy currents that run through the pickup. That brass is kind of slowing them down. And with a ferrous steel backplate, they'll be able to move faster or at a higher frequency. And that's how a steel backplate can make a pickup brighter and clearer. But what I want to talk about here is a magnetic field. With a magnetized ferrous backplate, you're going to get a wider and stronger field around the pickup. And the idea behind bending it in a U-shape like this, with it taller on the side of the wound string, is to kind of corral that magnetic field and direct it to the place where the strings will actually be. Aimed a little bit more toward the bass side where the strings move more to really get the most we can out of that energy. Science! Leo Fender used a very similar idea on the Jaguar pickups. That's why they have those metal triangles sticking up on both sides of the coil. Before we go any further, let's check the continuity and resistance of these pickups. They both check fine between five and six K. That seems rather underwound if I'm going for insanely high output, right? Well, you didn't get clickbaited, you'll see. This is a good thing. I also like that they're not exactly the same. That way they won't cancel each other out equally and castrate each other. So let's place these bobbins and mark them. But before I start drilling, I'm gonna plug up this small crock pot of soy wax. Uh-oh, it's not a blend of paraffin and tone wax from Magical unicorn bees from the North Hemisphere of Venus. The purpose of the wax is to glue the coils together to keep them from picking up unwanted vibration and to stop feedback. Different types may change the tone a little bit. I don't know, I've not been down that rabbit hole. But as I stated earlier, with the output level that this pickup is going to have, it, it's going to feed back anyway. So while that's melting, I'm going to use a finishing nail to pop some divots keep the drill bit from walking around and drill all the required holes. After a while, the wax is fully melted and we can go ahead and drop these bobbins in here. You can see the bubbles and that is the air escaping from the coil as it's invaded by the wax. Now after about 10 minutes, the bubbles have stopped and we're ready to take these out. I set the first one on this piece of cloth on the table so that I could wipe the excess wax from it. And with the second one, I had the cloth in my hand and I set the pickup in the cloth. And you will see later, why this caused somewhat of an embarrassing and comical situation down the road. This is a stack of 60 millimeter N94 neodymium magnets. These have 15 pounds of pull each. But wait, you better click away from this video. Those are bad for pickups, right? Have you been listening to those Keyboard Ninja guitar experts on the guitar forums and Facebook groups? Let me take a guess what you read. Neodymium magnets give your pickups ice pick highs. Neodymium pickups actually have an overwhelming bass response. This is why I've made such a conscious effort during this build to promote more high end frequencies. Neodymium pickups are way too strong. It will kill all the sustain. This is also not the case. Yes, neodymium pickups are very strong but magnetic field drops exponentially with distance. Once the magnet is placed on the back side of that pole piece, it has less magnetic gals at the front end than plain Alnico pole pieces. That is literally a magnet right beside your string, which is what causes stratitis. What they do is allow you to have a high level of output with an underwound pickup. And without the coupling capacitance of all those extra winds, you end up with a balanced pickup with a lot of clarity and a hi-fi sound. And I'm not just talking nonsense here. I've done the experiments, I've built the pickups, and with all other factors accounted for, you can get a very wide variety of tones. So one of these magnets should really kick this pickup into face melting territory, huh? We're gonna use three. 
So let's screw these coils down over the top of these magnets. Give her a final resistance test. With those kind of numbers, this thing should be pretty mild. Now all that's left to do is throw that thing in the pickup tested mule guitar. But first, a slightly embarrassing and comical disclaimer. This is pickup wax. My old lady and I don't really consider my work pants to be bedroom attire. Although she is a mixture of Mexican and Polish and does enjoy it when I wear only my work boots. Only one half of that last statement was a joke. You decide. This guitar has a kind of eddy vibe going on. So after I strum a few chords to check for clean clarity, we'll answer the question, will it Van Halen? So, before we go balls to the wall and crank it up to 11, let's see if it can make some retro high gain tones. <laughs> <laughs> Gent time. <laughs> <laughs> That's not exactly my type of music. Okay guys, that just about does it for this video. And yes, I am aware this is probably not the strongest humbucker in the world. If you can, cite and provide video evidence of a stronger humbucker. I was waiting on that and I still got some tricks up my sleeve. <laughs> if you found this entertaining or educational in any way, please like and maybe subscribe. I'm Clementine, you've been watching Heavy Metal ATC. Till next time!